Welcome back. So today, what we're going to do is discuss finally the definition of uh, what a Jordan algebra actually is. To begin, what we're really going to do is contrast it with the definition of, of uh, Lie algebras. So, um, just to let you know where we are, to remind you, we're following this beautiful text of Jacobson's, uh, which you can see is the, on the structure and representations of uh, Jordan algebras. And right now we're just still in the beginning, finishing the first section of the first chapter. Okay, so to understand um, what the definition of uh, Jordan algebra is, um, or what the motivation is, let's contrast with Lie algebras. So uh, recall, let's say if um, A is an associative algebra, then we can define this algebra, which I'll write as A minus, um, to be um, the underlying set of A, but together with a new operation, which is denoted bracket, which is just the commutator. So um, bracket of A and B is AB minus BA. Now, um, this new binary composition satisfies um, some very nice identities. Um, so note um, that we have um, the bracket is a bilinear operation, linear in both variables. Um, if you plug in the same thing twice, the bracket of A with itself is always zero. This is the so-called alternating property. Um, and finally, um, you have this um, nice rule which says, let's say, if I look at A, B bracketed with C plus, um, let's see, uh, B, C bracketed with A, then that's going to be this, uh, uh, let's see, I did it this way, is then plus um, C, A, B um, this is equal to zero. This is called the Jacobi identity. So these are um, three nice identities that this bracket satisfies. You can um, go ahead and check them. It's just um, it's just fairly straightforward check. Um, and motivated by these three identities, one can say, one can define, in general, a Lie algebra. is um, an algebra, say, L, with um, an operation which will denote bracket, satisfying these three identities. I guess the first isn't really identity, it's just a statement that it's a bilinear operation, which is part of the definition of an algebra. So maybe I should say satisfying these two identities. Now, the magical thing about um, this, this um, definition is that um, in some sense we know what all the examples are. So that is to say, I'm not trying to say something particularly deep here, but, um, but it's, well, it is a somewhat deep proposition which comes out of, say, Poincaré, Burkhoff, Witt. Um, which is that um, if L is a Lie algebra, then there exists an associative algebra A such that L is um, isomorphic to a um, to a, to um, a subalgebra of A minus. So that is to say, these identities um, are identities that are satisfied by every algebra of this form A minus, but moreover, any algebra that has these identities is comes from this construction of A minus. In other words, a subalgebra 
of such of such an A minus. Now, what we would love to have, but what we will kind of fail to have, is a similar characterization for Jordan algebras, right? Because remember, how we started was we started by saying, um, you know, a Jordan algebra is something that's modeled on looking at this um, operation um, you know, if we have an associative algebra, we take this A plus, which has this operation with a little dot, which is defined by A dot B is one half AB plus BA, looks kind of similar to how the Lie algebra started, so one might just guess that we could just write down the identities that this new product satisfies, and then define a Jordan algebra to be an algebra satisfying those set of identities, whatever we write down, and then it would be beautiful if we had a similar kind of proposition that said, that every algebra, you know, maybe, you know, may, um, that uh, every algebra j comma little dot that satisfied whatever set of identities we're going to write down that hopefully would characterize this operation would be isomorphic to a subalgebra of some a plus. That would be the ideal thing. It doesn't quite work. So, how, but let's 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 start trying this. What identities? Um, does this operation satisfy? So, if we look at this algebra A plus with this operation dot defined by A lower dot B is one half of AB plus BA, then what identities are satisfied? So, identities in A plus. Well, um, First off, it's commutative. In other words, A dot B, being that uh, operation, is symmetric, and A and B, it's the same as B dot A. Um, it happens to be power associative. Um, what does that mean? Well, it means that, for example, if we define um, if we um, define A to the, well, let's write it like this. If I look at A dot square to be A dot A, then let's try to define, for example, A dot cubed to be A dot A squared, right? A dot A dot A. Well, we could define it like that, but then there's a question, uh, would that be the same thing as if I did A dot squared dot A? Well, in this case, um, it, it happens to be because it's commutative. But more generally, I mean, um, are we able to move parentheses around? Um, are we able to move our parentheses around when we when we look at these kinds of things? Um, so, um, well, so it, it turns out that we can. Um, maybe this will really come up later, anyway. So maybe I won't. Um, try to give a more uh, detailed thing, but in general, let's see, if you define, I'll just state it, if you define A dot upper N to be A dot, how about A lower dot, A upper dot N minus 1, then what we actually have is A dot N dotted with A dot M is the same as A dot N plus M. Okay. So it is, this is the property of um, power associativity. Let me just write it as I've written it there. A upper dot N, lower dot A, upper dot M, is A upper dot N plus M. And so no matter how you move around your, your parentheses, you'll get the same answer. And in fact, probably the most direct way to check this is just to notice that if you are looking at one of these A pluses, then both sides in the associative algebra actually just evaluate to a n plus n, the normal exponential. Okay, now, so these are identities that are re reasonably straightforward to, to, to just find just by looking a little bit. The, the first really interesting identity, though, comes after you, you, after you look a little bit harder. So these are, this is like um, identities in degree two. We have a bunch of identities in one variable. So you can look at 
two variable identities. We've got one in degree two. You could look in degree three. Turns out there aren't any non-trivial ones in degree three. Um, but in degree four, finally, you find some. So you get your other non-trivial identity happens to come in degree four. So I'll just um, kind of derive it. What does it come from? It comes from looking at a dot a squared dot b, for example. So let's work out what this is. This is a lower dot a squared b plus b a squared. When I write a squared here, I'm really just thinking a upper dot squared. Maybe I'll just write an upper dot squared, just to be less confusing. Well, what is that if I, um, if I write that out? This is um, a, well, actually, it's upper dot is the same as a squared. This is evaluating it in the algebra, just you know, as, we, as we noticed over here. So it'll be easier to think about that way. OK, so if I write this out, I get a cubed b plus b um, plus a b a squared. So it's a times this, and then symmetrically plus this times a a squared b a plus b a cubed. Um, but now if I move this around a little bit, uh, give myself a little bit more room. Let's see, we have an a cubed b. Let me move this one over next to that to make it look a little bit better. Put my a's, my big a's all on the left. Um, and put the ones with the big a's on the right on the right hand side. a b a squared plus b a cubed. And now on the left I can pull out an a squared, and on the right I can pull out an a squared. So I get an a squared a b plus b a plus a b plus b a a squared. Or in other words, that's a squared times the a lower dot b plus a lower dot b a squared. Um, but then finally, that is a squared lower dot a dot b. So the non-trivial identity is that if you have a dot a squared dot b, then that's the same as a squared dot a dot b. OK, so now, semi-historically, what comes next is you look for some more identities. You look. Um, more variables, higher degree, you look and look and look, and life gets kind of complicated and you don't find anything. Okay, so at least um, not without quite a lot of looking. So these are the only identities that are easy to find, relatively easy to find. And so one makes the following definition. A Jordan algebra is an algebra J, so over some field F all the time, such that um, um, with um, its binary composition will denote it lower dot, such that um, one J lower dot is commutative, and two it satisfies the identity a squared dot a dot b is a dot a squared dot b, where a squared means a dot a for all a and b's. OK, so a Jordan algebra is simply a non-associative commutative algebra which satisfies these two identities. Um, now. I notice I, I skipped power associativity. We'll see later that power associativity will follow from these from these two axioms, um, but we'll see that later. But now one could ask: Did we actually succeed in our mission? Right? What did we actually want to do? We wanted to come up with some characterization of things like this uh, and their subalgebras, just like what happened for Lie algebras. So you could ask the question: If you satisfy these identities then are you um, sitting inside of some A plus for some associative algebra A? Um, well, turns out definitely not. Um, so um, one, 
one way of, of, seeing, of, of seeing how much you fail by is the following um, observation. So, and we'll see this a bit more later. So the fact, uh, maybe, maybe to, be, to make this make more sense, let me, um, let me make the following definition. We say that a Jordan algebra J is special if J um, is isomorphic to a subalgebra of A plus for some A in associative algebra. Okay, so now one could say, one could ask the question, are all Jordan algebras special? In other words, if you satisfy these um, identities, do you, are you a subalgebra of some A plus? And the an analogous statement for the algebras would be yes. The answer is definitely not. And one reason that you can see that the answer is no is that we will show later that there exists um, special Jordan algebras J such that, um, let's say, um, with homomorphic images, so maybe a J surjectively mapping onto some J bar, some algebra um, surjection, um, such that um, J is special, as I've said, but J bar is not special. Now, notice that if you have identities that are satisfied by, an, uh, by one algebra, then they're automatically satisfied by every homomorphic image. So, what does this say? Suppose, this says, really, this says that you cannot characterize special Jordan algebras by, um, by any set of identities, right? If you had a set of identities that characterized the special Jordan algebras, then they would all be satisfied here. But those identities would, would necessarily be also satisfied by the homomorphic image. Well, what did that mean? That would mean that this thing would satisfy the identities which should characterize special Jordan algebras, but it's not special. So you can't find a set of identities that would work. Okay, well, but um, all hope is not lost in some sense. We could try to change the question. We could say, well, um, how about if instead of just looking at subalgebras, we looked at homomorphic images? So there's a general, so there's some kind of general nonsense theory that says, um, general theory says there exists some set of identities. which characterize, well, not necessarily special Jordan algebras, but homomorphic images of special Jordan algebras. So, um, so one could then ask, well, maybe the identities that we found, um, you know, weren't weren't good enough. We just found the just those few identities. Um, maybe they don't characterize special Jordan algebras because nothing, no identities can characterize special ones. But maybe they characterize all homomorphic images of special Jordan algebras. Anything which is a homomorphic images image of a subalgebra of this kind of an algebra. Well, it turns out that doesn't work. <laughs> Um, so, but it, took, it, it takes a little bit of, a, of doing to find it. So it turns out that there exist identities which um, are um, satisfied by, um, by these special Jordan algebras.
but not all Jordan algebras. So you can find some nice identities that cut away um, the special ones from, um, and their homomorphic Im images, therefore, from general Jordan algebras, but it takes a bit of doing to find them. So the smallest ones um, were found in 1963 by Glenny. And it turns out that these identities are of degree 7 and 8, and I think in, the, in at least three variables. I don't know if there are how many variables you need, but... Um, but so there are identities, there are big, horrible, complicated identities that are satisfied by special Jordan algebras, but not by general Jordan algebras satisfying the few identities that I wrote down. Moreover, we really have no idea, at least as of the 2004 reference that I was looking at, uh, McCrimmon's book, um, A Taste of Jordan Algebras, um, we have no real idea whether or not we can write down even a finite set of identities which characterize special Jordan algebras and their homomorphic images. For all we know, you know, there's like 17 generators, or maybe there's, they're infinitely generated, and we really can't find these identities very easily, and we don't know how many there are. So, um, but, it does make sense to work with the definition that we gave for a couple of reasons. Um, practical reasons. First off, they give a nice structure theory, so you can actually work with uh, um, with those um, with those simple definitions of being commutative and satisfying that um, that nice identity a squared a dot b is a dot a squared dot b. So this this identity gives you a lot of traction. It gives you a lot of a lot of play. And you can really get some structure theory from it. And, you know, I mean, it's a human scale kind of thing, right? It may be true, for all we know, that if you impose these extra identities, you know, in degrees 7 and 8 um, or, or such, maybe you'll get some other, other things. But frankly, it's pretty hard to work with. So, um, so practically, it's, not, it's just not a very practical thing. Okay, so that's the definition of Jordan algebras. And more next time.